Hello and welcome to today's lesson on cyclotrons, which is part of the magnetic fields topic in AQA A-level physics. So in today's lesson, we're going to look at describing the movement of charged particles in particle accelerators. So if we've been successful and learned in today's lesson, we should be able to describe what happens to the direction of the magnetic force when electrons are deflected by the magnetic field, explain why moving charges move in a path that is circular, and state the factors that affect the radius of a circular path. Which which falls into the following part of the AQA A-level physics specification, moving charges in a magnetic field. Now, if the Lorentz or magnetic force is always acting perpendicular to the motion, okay, it causes an object to rotate in a circle. This is because the magnetic force or the Lorentz force is acting as a centripetal force. So as a result, we know the centripetal force is equal to this Lorentz force, this magnetic force. So therefore we can say mv squared over r equals BQV. So we can cancel out the V terms on either side of the equation and rearrange this to make R the subject. So R, the radius of deflection, is equal to MV over BQ. Now we know that momentum is equal to BQ. So this is what therefore tells us that R is equal to P momentum over BQ. So this tells us that the momentum of a particle is directly proportional to the radius of its circular motion. So the greater the momentum of the particle, the larger the arc of circular motion, the larger the radius of deflection. So the more massive a particle or the faster a particle moves, the greater its arc of circular motion. Now an application of a magnetic force being exerted on a charged particle to deflect its path in a, is a particle accelerator. Now, an example of a particle accelerator is a cyclotron. Now, a cyclotron is a type of particle accelerator invented by Ernest Lawrence in 1929. So, a cyclotron accelerates charged particles outwards from the center along a spiral path. Now, the particles are held to a spiral trajectory by a magnetic field and are accelerated by a variant electrical field. Now, Lawrence was actually awarded the Nobel Prize in 1939 for this invention. So, the magnetic field deflects the particle and the electrical field accelerates the particle by changing its speed. So cyclotrons were the most powerful particle accelerator until about the 1950s when they were superseded by the synchrotron but are still used to produce particle beams in physics and nuclear medicine and currently there are over 1,200 cyclotrons used in nuclear medicine worldwide for the production of radionucleotides. So a cyclotron is used in hospitals to produce high energy beams for radiation and it consists of two circular cavities or discs which we call Ds. Now with a uniform magnetic field applied perpendicular to the planes of the Ds, an alternating voltage, a potential difference is applied between the Ds. So charged particles are directed into one of the Ds near the center of the cyclotron. The charged particles are deflected into a circular motion by the magnetic field. So the charged particles are fired into one of the electrodes and the magnetic field makes the charged particles follow a circular path and leave the electrode. So as the charged particles increase in speed, Speed, the radius of the deflection increases. We know this from the equation R equals mv over bq. If v is increasing, R is increasing. So the particles follow a spiral path where the radius is increasing. Now as the charged particles across Across the gap between the Ds, the alternating voltage or potential difference reverses, so they're accelerated into the other D, where they are once again pushed onto a circular path by the magnetic field. Once emerging from that second D, the voltage again reverses and accelerates the particles into the first D, where the process repeats. Now, if the potential difference was not alternating, what this would cause, we would cause the particle to slow down after leaving the second electrode, because it would be going into a potential of like value so it would repel. So the alternating voltage can change in a periodic fashion as the time taken for the particle to move in the D semicircle doesn't depend on its speed. We know this because time to move in a circle is equal to distance over speed. So we know that the distance in a semicircle is pi r. Okay, so therefore we can say pi r over v, but we know that r is equal to mv over bq. So therefore we can pop that into the equation and we can say that the time to move in a semicircle is pi m over bq. 
MBQ. The second equation coming from the factor of substituted R equals, equals MB over BQ into the first equation. Now the time equation we just looked at does not contain a velocity term showing that the velocity of the particles does, do not affect the time it spends in the D because when the velocity increases the arc of the circular path increases to compensate so it keeps the time taken to be constant in that semicircle. So just to clarify the electrical field accelerates the particles in the cyclotron so therefore the radius of the path will increase because R is equal to MV over BQ. So what we can then do is we can look at working out the frequency of the alternating voltage in the cyclotron which links closely to alternating current because we know that frequency is 1 over time period and we've worked out the time period previously to be 2 pi m over bq because remember the time period is the time it takes for one complete circle so the time taken to move in a semicircle must be doubled so time in a semicircle is pi m over bq so the time period in total is 2 pi m over bq so at this point you could then rearrange this equation and say bq over 2 pi m and that gives us our frequency of how much we've got to alternate our potential difference now in recent years the most famous large-scale accelerator is the Large Hadron Collider which is the world's largest and most powerful particle collider and machine in the world so the collider is contained in a circular tunnel with a circumference of 26.7 kilometers and a depth of about 100 meters underground now the collider tunnel contains two adjacent parallel beam lines each containing a beam of travel in opposite directions around the ring the beams intersect at four points around the ring which is where the particle collisions take place and we've got about 1200 dipole magnets to keep the beams on their circular path now the magnetic field acts right angles or perpendicular to the movement of the charged particles which means they accelerate by deflection not by changing speed. Now the Large Hadron Collider is not a cyclotron. The radius of the particle beam remains fixed in its structure. So this means R must remain constant in the equation. This is what we call a synchrotron. So in a synchrotron the radius of the particle beam must always stay fixed unlike a cyclotron. Now the radius of the particle beam must remain fixed as the structure is too large to change this value so the radius of the particle beam must remain fixed otherwise the particle beam would hit the side of the actual collider so as a result we've got to look at the actual value of R that we've got so this means that when the particle is accelerated due to the electrical field the magnetic field must also be increased to ensure the value for R is not altered because the increased B value in the equation cancels out the increased V value now if this doesn't take place and the particle will collide with the side of the contain the side of the wall and not the other particles. So let's summarize what we've learned in today's lesson. Forces on charged particles moving in a magnetic field are given by the equation F equals BQV when the field is perpendicular to the velocity. The direction of the force on positive and negatively charged particles can be calculated, and we understand the circular paths of particles with applications in devices such as the cyclotron. So I hope you've been successful and learned in today's lesson where we can describe what happens to the direction of the magnetic force when electrons are directed by a magnetic field. We can explain why the moving charged particles move in a path that is circular and we can state the factors that affect the radius of the circular path. So I hope you've enjoyed today's lesson on cyclotrons which is part of the magnetic fields topic in AQA A-level physics. Thank you very much for listening to today's lesson and have a lovely day.